You give the cashier $10 and get back 37 cents and change. Now, if sales tax was 7%, how much was the cost of the product or products? All right, so that's the question. Feel free to use a calculator. But if you could figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. And of course, I'm going to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. So here is the problem, and of course we're dealing with a math word problem. So always use the rule of three. Now the rule of three is read the problem at least three times before you do anything, because it takes more than just once to really absorb all the information. But of course we go to the store, we buy a product or products. When we go to pay, we have $10, right? So we're gonna give the cashier $10 and they're gonna give us back 37 cents and change. Okay, now of course, uh, this total cost includes the sales tax of 7%. So the question is, how much was the product? So anytime you're dealing with a uh, math word problem or something uh, complicated, you always, always want to try to model the problem. Okay, you want to try to visualize it because once you visualize it or you can visualize it, then it's far easier to see the solution. So let me go ahead and show you what I did. Now your model doesn't have to be like this, but you know you should have uh, some sort of conceptual model that's kind of like this, right? All right, so here we have a product. We don't know how much it cost, but we know we have to pay 7% uh, uh, tax on it, okay? So, uh, so here is the cost of our product, whatever that is. Now the tax, the sales tax, is gonna be 7% of whatever the cost of the products is, but this will be our tax. So our total cost is gonna be the cost of the product plus uh, the respective sales tax. So that is our total. Now, what is our total? Well, if you gave the cash here $10 and we got back 37 cents and change, the difference here is the total cost. So this is just the basic kind of representation of the problem, but let's go to take this a step further so we can um, actually solve uh, this problem. Now, here, okay, is a good clue that you want to be thinking about algebra. Now, if you don't know algebra, you know, this may not uh, make a lot of sense, but hopefully inspires you to learn uh, some algebra. But anytime we have an unknown value, so here, how much was the product? This is an unknown value. Well, we don't know how much the product was, okay? And uh, oftentimes, when you see a prom that says, how much was this? or how much was that, or you know anything along those lines, you can always think in the terms of a variable okay, to represent that amount. And a variable, of course, we could use like a variable x, y, doesn't make a difference. But of course, if we're using a variable, we need to be thinking about algebra. So I'm gonna use the variable x. So I'm gonna let x equal uh, the actual cost of the product. Okay, and I'm just gonna uh, assume we had one product here. It doesn't make a difference if we had multiple uh, products that added up to nine dollars. We'll just keep it nice and simple. Let's suppose we just had one product. Let's let X equal the cost of that product. So if that's the case, we can actually see what's going on here much easier. So here's the cost of the product. It's X. Now we have to calculate tax for this transaction, which is going to be seven percent of the cost of the product. So if you don't know how tax works, uh, you have a sales tax, for example. Yeah, um, you're going to be taking a percentage of the cost of the products that will, uh, of the cost of the product or products, that will be your tax. So uh, in this particular case, it's 7%. So we're going to take 7% of the cost of the product. Now, of course, that's now X. And that's going to be equal to the difference of our change. We got back 37 cents, but we gave the cashier uh, $10. So how much uh, you know, did this actual transaction cost? Well, $9.63, because 10 minus 37 cents, $10 minus 37 cents is $9.63. So the cashier said, hey, can you give me $9.63? I say, sure, no problem. Here's $10, and they're going to give me back uh, 37 cents and change. All right, now, uh, once we kind of, you know, uh, kind of cleared up uh, any confusion here, hopefully now we understand what kind of occurred, 
what we need to do is build an equation because we have this variable x, right, which represents the cost of this product. Well, this isn't going to help us out unless we can build an equation to solve for this variable. And we certainly can because we kind of already have this model of an equation, right? The product plus the tax is equal to $9.63. So let's use some algebra here to actually build this equation. So X is the cost of the product. Now the sales tax, the way we calculate percentage, right? is gonna be 7% of the cost of the product. So when you wanna find the percent of a number, we're gonna to have to change that percent to a decimal. Okay, so 7% is the same thing as the decimal 0.07. Now, how do we uh, calculate or how do we figure that out? Well, pretty easy. All we need to do to um, go from a percent, actually, let me do this right here. Just a quick review for those of you that need a quick review on how to change percent to a decimal. So here we have 7.0%. So uh, if we want to change that percent to a decimal, what we can do is move the decimal point over two places to the left. So that's equal to 0 0.07 as a decimal. But it's the same thing as dividing by 100. So technically, you're dividing uh, the percent by 100, but it, effectively what you're doing is moving the um, decimal point over two places to the left. So that's what we need to do. We need to uh, change this percent to a decimal. So now we have 0 0.07 times the cost of the product, which of course is X. So this is our total amount, okay, for this transaction, and we know it's equal to nine dollars and sixty three cents so what we have here is a basic linear equation x plus 0 0.07 x is equal to 963 and the next step here is to solve this equation for x are you struggling in math because of confusing lessons maybe the teacher's not showing you all the steps you need or things are happening too fast well there is a better way so come on over to my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. There you'll find clear step-by-step -step instruction by me that will definitely make a huge difference in your math success. So make sure to check out all my courses by following the links in the description. So what we have here is this basic linear equation. So x plus 0.07x is equal to 963. Again, x is... The cost of the product, 0.07x, is the sales tax for that respective uh, product at that price. But the total amount with all, uh, with everything all in, the product plus the tax is 963. So let's go ahead and solve this equation. So x plus 0.07x, there is a 1 in front of that x. These are like terms. So it's going to be 1 plus 0 0.07. So that's 1.07x is equal to 963. And to solve for x, all we have to do is divide the, uh, both sides of the equation by 1.07. So 963 divided by uh, 1.07 is 9. So that means our lovely product here, whatever it is, is $9. But let's suppose we were like, well, I'm not sure about that. We can certainly check this. And let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so if our product was $9, okay, that's the cost of our product. Now let's calculate the tax on it. So that would be 7% of $9. So 7% of 9 is going to be 0 0.07 times uh, 9. Now, of course, if you have a calculator, you just kind of follow along. But 0 0.07 times 9 is 63 cents, or 0 0.63. So we have 9 plus 0.63 is 9.63, which is $9.63. And of course, that is the difference between giving the cashier $10 and getting back 37 cents and change. So effectively, we could just kind of think of it this way, right? We went up to the cashier uh, stand and uh, the cashier saying, that would be $9.63, no problem. I'm gonna give you $10 and you're gonna get back 37 cents and change. Okay, so this is just a, a simple example of how to use some basic algebra to solve some interesting problems that involve money. But algebra is so diverse, you can solve a wide variety, an infinite uh, amount of uh, word problems using algebra. Now, if some of you out there are actually taking algebra, uh, let me give you a couple of uh, suggestions if you you know want to improve in word problems or just in, in, in general mathematics. So if you are taking algebra, um, or Algebra 1. Um, I'm going to have links to all my main courses to include uh, Pre-Algebra, Algebra 1, Algebra 2, all those courses. You'll find the description of those, or find the links in the description um, 
Excuse me, we'll find the links in the description. That's what I meant to say. But some of you out there might be saying, you know what, uh, I, I really kind of forgot all this math. I was really good at math way back in the good old days. That is awesome. So you must check out my new course. It's called my Math Skills Rebuilder course. Uh, a lot of people are taking advantage of this, so I'm really happy I built it. And this course really gets you in touch with all that math that you forgot, or maybe you never learned uh, many years ago. So I start off with basic math, arithmetic, and then I teach you a ton of algebra, a ton of geometry, uh, even some basic trigonometry and some probability and statistics as well. It's a self-paced course, but it's different than my YouTube videos. It's complete full instruction. Uh, and, uh, you know, of course, I am the teacher. But by doing this course, okay, you'll probably end up learning more than you actually learned in school. So if you want to check that out, you'll find the link to uh, it in the description as well. But hopefully this little video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.